All right, welcome back, chaps, to Battle Brothers. So, and a bunch of new names suggested, so I want to welcome the following lads who will get their chance eventually. Uh, in order that they will be added is Benok, Alex Nesterov, Shade, Caber Beast, JP Source, Mushy Thornface, and Sog. Nice to see a few veterans of previous campaigns in Alex, Caber, and JP Source. Hopefully, uh, it's just the thing we need to turn this campaign around. So, at the end of the last episode, I was talking about how overall i mean i think we can all agree this map absolutely sucks all kinds of nasty things it's just this is easily the worst map i've ever gotten i mean this whole disaster here it's just ugh. and i think it's also pretty obvious that i've been far too defensive in these first 60 days i think i've fallen into the trap of allowing the fact that it's expert economic difficulty plan my mind too much and one of you, I think it was Dolmar, made the point that I wasn't taking on enough risk early on. Which I absolutely agree with. Now this could be a perfect example of that. Like, do we take this on? Fight this? I mean, this will be a straight 12v12. A 2 to 3 marksman. I mean, maybe, but the thing is... But again, I mean... I think I don't fight this because there's no leader. If there was a leader, I would risk it because the leader will give us nice armor. We've only got two archers, one of which is not great. Or well, Finn's actually a bannerman. He's not even an archer. It sounds like it's a bit loud. Whoopsie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is... What do I want to get from brigands? I want to get their armor. But I mean, if, if we, we don't even outnumber them, and they've got marksmen, and it's during the daytime, the point is I don't think I'd be in a position to be able to dagger them down to get their armor. Again, it's, it's another one of those fights that I'm fairly confident we could win, but I think we would pay such a hell of a price for it. Now, arguably, I could clear this out. Do a bunch of auxiliaries. It'll get us an extra bit of money because of whatever we'll get from a reward. But you know, you know what? Let's just take the safe and almost guaranteed 800 gold. I was thinking about this last night when I was struggling to get to bed about how the early games, oh yeah, that this would not have been a good fight at all for us. How the early game, well, I, I suppose the majority of the game, I mean like with Battle Brothers, especially on Expert Expert, until you get to the super late game, which is where everybody is fully level 11 at least, and completely decked out in most amazing gear until you get to that part, it's, it's a tightrope walk of risk and reward and one mistake sends you off the edge I mean, it can be one mistake, like one big bad battle can go you, can send you over the edge to doom. But you can also just keep slowly, slowly overbalancing to one way. And I think I've overbalanced to not being aggressive enough. That being said, you're still going to be smart. And now, like, this last group of 12 raiders, again, we could have fought them, but it's risk-reward. The risk was not that huge, especially if we fought them at night, but the reward wouldn't have been that good because they're just straight raiders. I don't know. Okay, so how do we have you lads set up? It was like that. that, that. At least we've got 12 lads that we can stabilize with. I mean, the majority of these guys are going to be replaced. Like someone like Jungian. I mean, 61 melee skill at 4 is awful. 63 at 3. He's put, maybe got long-term potential, but uh, nah, not really. I mean, I I've had to take Gifted. Padden, not really any long-term potential either. Any glitch? Maybe. 65 at 4 and 1 star. Hmm. I have a feeling I should have made him the sergeant. Anyways. Not too late. I could still turn him into a sergeant. Malice, nope, place him one day. Faylong, 
has got some potential. That's good. 68 at level 5. That's okay. And Michael Stubbs, who's obviously our companion, who's probably the only person so far that's got real long-term potential. No Freck, of course, long-term potential. Good. Paul Lusko is actually going to be a pretty damn good shield breaker with all this fatigue. Ben, yeah, okay, Benjamin. And Arnar, the shield breaker as well. How many shield breakers do I have here? I think I've got too many. I've got three of them. Well, one of them's a backup. Anyways, so my long-term goal now is just to keep these guys. I'm not going to go fishing for new recruits right now unless I have to, unless I have to replace people. As crap as they are, we'll just take whatever perks we can to get them as good as they can be, as quick as we can. And then hopefully these guys will be part of the group that gets us to the late game, gets us to the ability where we can just stab stabilize economically. We know we're near economically stable right now. For me, I'm economically stable when I've got mostly good gear on everyone. I've got my war bows and I've got like 5,000 gold in the bank. Now that Schachtheim military group went in here. If they're still in and around here, then we can go run at those brigands for sure. Okay, so what is this? Escort to caravan, 1720 to go where? Adlerwacht. Now this is something we might actually take a punt on and try it. Because Adlerwacht of course is going to be far. Which route is it going to take us? Probably down there. Down through here. All the way around. I mean, it's decent money. We're not going to have to pay. We're not going to have to feed our guys while we're doing it. Sitting on a thousand gold. Just here's my concern. As soon as I take this, then that group of mercenaries, that group of raiders behind us will get in range and attack us. 290 is far too much. 84 is nice and cheap for goat cheese. Right. Remember, we, we, we can always just uh, abandon the mission. It looks like a fight that'll get us all killed, like this, actually. <laughs> Man. We've got some hands who will hopefully at least take some of the arrows getting shot at us. I, I absolutely want these flails in this fight. Against these raiders, it'll be very good. Just checking to see who's got the big fatigue numbers here. I would say Michael Stubbs, maybe Michael Stubbs, yeah. Swords, axes. This is gonna suck, it's probably gonna be a fight. Okay, they hit us before the, the forest, which I think is good for us. Tier 2 crossbow, that's always horrible. Okay. The problem is this crossbowman is going to be able to get up onto the high ground and just shoot down onto us. It's going to suck. It's going to suck a lot. Do I bother moving everybody back? I think I do. I just want to encourage these caravan hands to get involved with the fight. I just need them to get chopped to pieces for a couple of turns just to buy me some time to do some damage. The theory at least. Damn, okay, wait, I need... Not ideal. Yeah, so it's going to be a slightly staggered formation. Billy Glitch is kind of being left out to dry for the moment. Oh god, here we go. Most of these guys have shields, which kind of sucks.
love to get my hands on these armors, but it's just far too dangerous of a situation. Hopefully that frick can reach that marksman. I'm not going to move forward here. I don't know. I think I want to let them come. Two thirty fours, one sixty-two. Must. Caravan hand having a bad time. Might expect. Like, that's a decent shot, but if I can just get like him hit this marksman, maybe in the head. Now they start getting confident. Gotta pick the right time to move forward. Wait, hold the line, men. Didn't do anything. They aren't engaging, which is super annoying. They obviously know they've got the ranged advantage. This is why it's so hard to fight when you don't have ranged advantage. And one of you in the comments may ask the question, why don't we focus on buying armor rather than hunting for hunters? And this is exactly why. We have basic armor, like the most basic armor. But you absolutely have to start getting your archers now. Otherwise, every fight against bandits just turns into this. They just sit behind their archers and you can't do shit. You have to approach them when they're already stronger than you. It's it's just a disaster. Just We've just got to get over this hump. Need these battles to go our way. This is kind of opened up for Michael Stubbs to run into these archers. I think I'll take that. You don't go there till he gets because it'll put you against three of them. Let this dude move forward. Get him, uh, Frick. Oh. Hit. Uh, injured shoulders. So that's lower damage output, I think. Oh, oh no, you need this. 50%. That's not good. Oh, Finn, if that second shot could hit the head as well. But this is the worst. This is actually very bad for Finn now. He's exposed. Take down this guy with a flail first, I think. If we can hit him. Nice, good job, Jung. Shit. Yeah, that actually helps us because the biggest threat he had to Finn was the ranged fighters. Bobbins is in a very unenviable position right now. Dangerous. Get him, boys. Okay, awesome. So I've managed to get both the crossbowmen into melee range. One or two of them might still be able to get a couple shots off there. You might say, why not get Phalong's shield up there, but this raider will have a higher to hit chance against Malice. So if I left play long shield up then malice will be easier to hit so malice is the likely target anyway so it's kind of like fei long may as well attack that kind of i learned that principle from playing dota when ooh, the person you're laning with is getting gone on then if you're not the one who's being gone on you may as well just all out attack this is gonna hurt ooh, uh, ooh, oh yes almost half his armor gone Oh, fuck off! <coughs> that had to have been a low percentage chance. Ugh. And it's pierced his arm muscle, so now that's most of his damage gone. He's going to be unlikely to hit <coughs> anything. <coughs> uh, one down, 11 to go. <coughs> oh, 
Oh, Jesus. That killed. Yeah, that was a kill. Tilly glitch. Rup tilly glitch. Does how dangerous these guys are with flails when they don't have shields. Oh, that was stupid. What was I thinking? Now I've just buffed his damage. Should have waited. Come on, Paul, let's go. Seriously. I'm not looking good. Okay, nice hit. Did that 40%. God, oh, so this fucking pierced arm muscles. These guys are fully armored. It's really going to suck for us. I want to sneak myself in there so I can finish off that raider. Uh, next turn. Overall, the experience of playing on expert economic difficulty here, I have to say, it, I mean, it's the first time I've done it, but I'm not at all surprised by how it's done. Uh, pretty much as I suspected, it, it just amplifies all the parts of the game that I don't like. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be playing expert economic ever again. I'm sure it, it increases the difficulty and... Honestly, if, if that's what you guys want to see, there's better streamers. Uh, you can watch that for. And also, I've played over a thousand hours. So, you know, I'm, I'm finding that I'm that I'm getting burnt out on Battle Brothers a lot quicker than I used to, which I, I suppose is fair enough. I mean, I've played so much. Okay, come on, Jesus, Paul, let's go. So I don't think it's a good idea to have any aspect of the game amplified that's gonna make me get sick of the game quicker. I mean, look, this is fucking insane. Can't land a shot. There we go. Well done, Patton. Finally. Malice. Finally. Anyways, it has been a horrible season so far. Absolutely horrible. But hey, th th that is just part of Battle Brothers, you know? Every campaign is different. Every campaign you roll the dice and we got snake eyes on this one. This is not a... This was an, a horrible setup for us. And, and like, here's my point. I mean, we're going to end up winning this fight probably. But it's... The cost of it has been absolutely devastating. I think we've lost two brothers. We've lost our Bannerman and we've lost one of the guys who's... Frontline lad. I mean, in previous campaigns, I've, I've, I've tried being a lot more selective with the brothers in the beginning, you know, just trying to make sure I hire guys while good and then hiring and firing if they are crap. But that also ended up being a fail, a failed campaign, that is. Just because I spent all my money on hiring guys, most of which turned out to be crap anyway. Uh, and then the money I need to be spending on tools and weapons I didn't have because I was hiring brothers who were shit. But I think this campaign, we, we, we've gone to the extreme of not replacing obviously shit brothers immediately. So it's clearly not an all or nothing proposition. You've got to find that middle ground between knowing when to stick to a brother and when to replace him. I was going to make a little adjustment. <laughs> Your turn done, Alvarin, yeah, it is. <laughs> hey! Fleeing now, good.
Right, or not, just hold up. We could, I suppose, dagger this guy down and get at least one good set of armor out of this. I want to make sure I chase this guy down. I want to get him for the XP. Surround this dude. He should be fairly quick and easy to take down. You know, Phalong doesn't have any armor, so careful. Wait till he flees first. God, guys. Of all the campaigns we've done, this is easily the one where almost everyone has horrible melee skill. And now I've got to try to kill this guy this turn before he kills Arno. Bobbins, maybe you can land a good stab and it'll ruin his morale. Nope. There we go. Pierced hand. Good. That was his melee skill. That'll help. Play long. Get ready to get into position, but don't get into position just yet. It's too dangerous. Far too dangerous. And this fucker always seems to go first as well. I mean, look at because he's not that tired. One more stab and his morale will shatter. Here you go. Got him. Whew. We lost two brothers there. Not good. Oh my god, Michael Stubbs, are you for real? He's only attacking at 67, it's not good. The Tilly Glitch and Finn. Rip. A nice little haul, 200 crowns, tier 2 crossbow, awesome, basic mail, and the two arming swords are, are really good. But that is going to cost us, I mean, I shudder to think how much, uh, how many tools we'll have to buy now. And we're in no position to buy tools, we can forget about that. So you lads using these swords, may as well use these armored swords now. And Mizuma, also he's tiny so that's no good. Can even break a shield, I suppose. Now we still only have 11 lads. Good lord, game is hard. As a raider he needs melee skill. Eek. I don't think I need to take Colossus because of his two stars and hit points, but now this is, he's level 5 and we've still put almost nothing into melee defense. Not good. Not good at all. Hmm. I mean, I, what I need is, I need short-term stability from people. I need short-term damage. I think Flail Mastery is the way to go for that. Let's just turn him into a, a flail expert and just popping heads. He's He's got the fatigue for it. His melee skill obviously isn't great, but he'll just have to use false adaption. At least flail mastery is going to have him bypassing uh, shield bonuses. He's a flail expert. I don't know whether I want to use him with a shield or not. I might do. I mean, he's probably going to be sitting on the on the edge of the formation, the corners. I think he would do well. Uh, yeah, he he would do well to have shield expertise. Nine. And another guy who doesn't need losses. Birds of fatigue. Excellent. 
That's a shield breaker. He needs quick hands. To say he can start the shield out. Help him in those first few rounds. Uh, the arrows are flying. And nice. Two boar spears as well. I think I want to give Pat and Fane the boar spear. I mean, this 54 accuracy is dead. It's a pretty sad lot of brothers, i got to say. <laughs> as a group of 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 fighters, they're all pretty pathetic, is the word for it. Well, we've got some gear we can use. I just have to hope we can go past a village where we can buy some tools and we don't get attacked again. If we get attacked again, we have to abandon the mission. There's no caravan hands that can help us. Hmm. These are the kiddies playing. They don't want to hear about the gods. Malice Wonderland, you've traveled. Say something. Malice takes his boots off and shows the bottom of his feet to the children. They recoil, gagging and covering their mouths. The little girl lets out a long ew to really drive the point home. The man wags his foot around, showing off disgustingly calloused skin. I spent years on the road and most of them without a good shoe to step with. I know what it's like out there. I've seen the dangers. People stabbing one another in their sleep, killing for a bite of a biscuit. Strangers befriend you so they can betray you, and all that is when it's going well. When it goes bad, it gets... Well, it gets real bad. You kids got no business being out here. You'll be raped, murdered, enslaved, tortured, fed to dogs, eaten by boars, bears, wolves, all things that look like look at you like it's lunchtime on two legs. Go home, a lot of you. Band of children murmurs amongst themselves. One announces he's going back to his mom. The little girl states she didn't even want to be out here anyway, and never got the treat she was promised. Sensing a morale break, the little leader tries to corral the children, but it's no use. The group breaks apart and, thankfully, starts going home. Some of the men are relieved as they did not wish to see the little ones continue their doom journey. Good. We need 60 tools. Introducing a new regimen to train the brothers in mastering a weapon is good for everyone's morale. Those who do the training improve their prowess and chances of survival and earn the admiration of their companions, while the others have something fun to watch while sitting on a log and stuffing their faces with mutton. The trainee practices pra the trainees practice in every spare moment with a variety of weapons until hard arms become like oaken branches, and sharp eyes grow as keen and unforgiving as those of a great cat. Not only is Cole Jungian brackets flail, a fearsome threat to our enemies, but his swift footwork makes you think of dancing girls. Melis of Wonderland remarks, only to be soundly chastised with a training sword by Cole. Us. Professionals now. I'm pretty sure we, yeah, we're, we're all over the professional renown. We can do work for noble houses. I hope we can go into Wolfenstein. I don't think so. It's going to take us right. Damn. And this is the end of us. Uh, sigh. Yeah, let's do an armor lineup and see who's got what. Uh, 93 armor is higher than any of that. 95, 47, ugh. On 10, 8. Four. Oh, well. To the death, lads. Oh, that's no good. Don't have that. Yeah, 115, 18, 
Hmm. Rough bows, bows, maces. Definitely want the flails. Mace specialist. Yep. Sword. Perfect. Axe. I wonder if he isn't better off with a boar spear. I mean, I've got that. Yeah, give him the spear. Spear, spear, sword. On arc and then quick hands to his pike. Is this an issue though? Cole Jungian's hardly going to hit anything. And he doesn't have... However, he's swinging for 10 fatigue. Okay, that's fine. He's just going to have to swing and build up uh, his stacks of uh, quick reactions. I mean, some raiders, the leader is nice. A few marksmen, at least some of them are thugs. It could have been worse. It could have been entire, entirely raiders, marksmen, and the leader. And they start with high ground, because of course they do. At least they're coming at us. It, it, it would have been a disaster if they were all just standing back and not coming anywhere near us. Then I'm just going to wait and see if I can't pick a better shot there with low frick. We'll move back one line. I don't think that'll force this marksman off his perch. One, five, seven, eight. Yeah, he'll be able to shoot all that line. Gotta hope that these thugs hit our front lines first. We can talk to them and then shatter their morale. Again, it's another it's another winnable fight, but this is gonna hurt. Exactly what I intended. I sh want head and fane out there. Oh. Shooting. That little fucker with his level 2 dagger is actually quite dangerous. And let's hope Michael Stubbs can pop this one's head open. That'll be pretty important for us. Is the leader doesn't have nice armor, so we don't even get that. Is this marksman okay? I was expecting him to stand up on that high ground. It's oh, glad that missed. That would have wrecked his arm. Yes, 49% good hit. 52, yes, Michael Stubbs. That's what I'm talking about. Oh no, it takes one more arrow and he's dead, so may as well get a stab off, which he misses, because of course he does. Right. Do I just start bombarding the archers now? I don't think so. I think we just start blast through these guys and then we'll send these two lads to run at them. I don't think, don't, no, don't move forward, let them approach. Yeah, actually moving forward here now is fine. So this guy needs to switch his weapon, so he would only get one attack off that next turn. If anything. Fane doesn't even accomplish that. Miss. Another miss. Oh. oh yeah, oh no, <laughs> rip. I think that was a strike down though. Or was it a kill? It was a kill. Uh, from what I understand, if you can see the weapons over their little image, then they're outright dead. But if they drop and you don't see the weapons, then they've been struck down.
40% worth a, worth a try. Clever AI, okay. Um, I just need to not attack this guy. He's reposting, it's too dangerous. Let's just let him exhaust himself by reposting. <clears throat> Hit right in the face. Come on, Alvarin. Finally, Carl Jung. His false adaption stack's built up enough there. Yeah, I'm not going to put Mazuma's shield up. I want to encourage this guy to, to not repose on the next turn. If he attacks twice, at least we can attack him on the next turn. Oh! Look at how slow all of our lads are. We're, we're almost always going at the end of the turn. That's normal, honestly. There's a way around that you can put points into... Uh, what's it called again? Initiative. But the thing is, it's, you know, fatigue hit points and melee skill and melee defense. If you take initiative, then you have to compromise on one of those other stats. Eighty-nine missed. Still reposting. Ah! <coughs> Play long, sorry, buddy, but you're next. Looks like. Could there be hope? Nope. Oh, maybe. Knock him back. But this lad will just kill him. Yo, oh, those crossbow bolts are terrifying. Good hit. <coughs> Rip. So is that a kill or a strike down? Killed. Uh, vitalities just keep piling up. That's four brothers lost in two battles now. And this battle isn't even done yet. God. Bobbins. Oh, God. Ow. Wolverine. Didn't we have quick hands? Oh, I could have sworn he had quick hands. Damn. Oh, well, let's go. Clutch it. That's three down. Gonna be four soon. Kinda have to step into this brigand radar, but whatever. No. <laughs> 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 uh, 
38, 15. I'm going to wait and see if they don't put their shields up on this turn again. Shield wall, shield wall, shield wall. We just can't do anything, really. They are breaking. So there is that. That dude's attacking donkeys for some reason. Oh, shot low frick. And shield wall, shield wall. God, that was close. Turn done, shield wall. This is the only guy who doesn't have a shield up, so he's the target now. Yes! Three killed in this battle, five in the last two fights. Shatter your damn morale already. So close. At the very least, I want to get whatever I can from the, la the raiding lord. Up, Michael Stubbs. Acting two turns, shield wall, let's wait. Wait. Good, there we go. Oh, damn. I shouldn't have attacked again. Fuck. Now, unfortunately, it's unlikely we get anything from this guy. We can maybe get his helmet. I doubt very much we would get. Uh, his armor because it's almost wrecked and that weapon is going to be badly damaged because he's been able to attack with it so much anyway we'll do what we can stab the bugger to death right he is close to breaking so Zuma, why aren't you carrying a dagger Look at Malice, he hasn't taken a hit yet this battle. He's like, oh, what's the problem, guys? Easy. Easy battle, no problem. Um, I do not want to break that shield. And also, if I attack, there's the danger that I hit him in the head. But uh, he, he's one hit and his morale's going to break. I don't want to risk throwing any of that gear. The dagger around here. Yeah. <laughs> the ground shield. Okay, good. He's going to exhaust himself pretty damn quick if he keeps doing that. Let's give him the old surround. Surround and kill. <laughs> Just one of these has to hit, come on. Most. Yeah, he should be exhausted now. No, on the next turn. Um well, let's go shield. Shield wall, boys. Ooh. Just wait, honestly. I mean, he should be exhausted on the next turn. 
the shield wall around him is super unlikely to hit anyone. I mean, he still he still can absolutely, but okay, now we can start stabbing. One of these are gonna hit. There you go. Get him. Live bugger. Any second, there you go. The one, two, three, four brothers killed. Got the best in that, which is nice. But it's very nearly time to call it this campaign, I think. I mean, I have said in the past we play through to the bitter end, but... Uh, I don't know. If by some miracle we can complete this mission and get to 18,000, it's unlikely. We're going to have to go around this hook here. There's just no way. Look at this. One, two, three, six of us left. Seven of us left. And of course, no stars in any skill. Uh, I remember when I saw Mizuma, I was so gutted. I mean, you, you, you love to see tiny and three, mele uh, three range skill, but then that starting value means you'll never get above like I think 80 something. It's just not good enough. Not good enough. Right, Malice, the Raider. Nice. Uh, I don't think it matters. What do I give him here? Brawny. Uh, his fatigue is okay. Recover is always a good option. I think weapon specialization is just to make those fatigue numbers go a bit further. Sword specialist, potentially. Yep. Word at the Wacht. So, sitting and jesting with the men while they check their kit, hone their blades, and mend their armor, you, your mind wanders off to thinking about new ideas for improving the company and its reputation across the lands. What do we tell them? Save up seven and a half, <laughs> low. Heavy armor, nowhere near. Uh, two men to master the hammer. That's the easiest, so we'll do that one. Well, on the plus side, with so many people dying, the amount of tools we need has gone down. I want to talk to you soon. Are we going to do this? Incoming swarm of goblins. Holy hell. Praise orange Jesus. We've made it. And now we've got to spend... What? Oh, for fuck's sake. So we don't even get the full amount. 
You have to wonder if a place like Adlerwacht is worth losing some lives over. You did get there, but not every cart made it. Leader of the wagon train walks up with a somewhat lighter than expected satchel in hand. I'd pay you more, Sellsword, because I know perfection in this world ain't easy, but Wiedekind the Younger insists that I make subtractions based on, well, our losses. Surely I understand. He seems fearful. You will carry out some retribution on him. But you simply take the money and go. Business is business. Fuck this game, seriously. Uh, God. And tools and supplies are extortionately expensive. I can't really sell anything for profit. Because we're in a shitty town. And we gotta start again hiring more level 1 nerds. I feel sick. Right, so. We need two for the front line. We'll use male shirt and we'll actually wait this here. Those two male shirts will go up front. Yes, eight and nine, ten, and eleven. 12. I think we'll, do, we'll go for a 5 up front, 7 at the back setup. I suppose we've just got to start hiring some bodies. So, a farmer, uh, a day tailor. I mean, we're in no position to like run around and try hire a mason. Why not? He'll at least learn quickly, which he's going to need to. 9, 10, 11. For interest's sake, let's take a look at these new recruits. Herman, a star in melee skill, but 47 starting. Terrible. Steiner, similar story. Good starting stats. Eric, another dastard. And Gisbert, who's strong at least, but no stars. Ugh. You know what, I, I just don't even want to play anymore. I don't want to continue with this. Okay, so this is pretty uncommon for me but I'm gonna retire and end this campaign here just because it's just been ugh, a cursed campaign I think it's a confluence of, of events the three things being the absolutely AIDS map that we got this is easily the worst map I've ever generated and the expert economic difficulty and then my not playing the early game properly so we could drag this out over another three or four three or four episodes but I'm not enjoying this. This is not fun. So, here's what we do. We'll retire. Um, I'll take a little break. And I think what I should do is I'm going to look at all the latest dev blogs that are previewing the, the upcoming DLC. And I'll give you guys my thoughts on those. And then we'll start another campaign. Probably without expert economic. Because as I said, that, that's not, it's not adding anything that I'm enjoying to the game. And then we'll have to hope for a kind of map. Um, I'm going to keep the name list as it is. And then we'll just keep going with the names as they were submitted. So all of you lads who got in this campaign will have to get to the back of the line for the next campaign. But I think that's fair because everybody else has submitted names and are still waiting. Let's just retire and see what score we get. Like 108, which is more than I thought. Yeah, so having built the dawn bring us to notable name recognition in the realms, the lords would bid against one another for your services. Not only so you'd fight for them, but so they'd know at the very least have to fight against you. The crown's rolling in, and the faith and faith that the company would do well without you. It just seemed the proper time to put the sword away and retire to a life outside of war and killing. Fortunately, such popularity comes at a cost. The company kept falling into wartime contracts, and over and over was ground down. Brothers starting to leave, lest they became victim to the next nobleman who thought they would knew best how to command the mercenaries. While the Dawnbringers visited, visited a town for rest and recuperation, a local princess took a shine to Cole Jung, the wild man. He was purchased for a large sum of gold and given to the noblewoman. He went and visited the man recently. For dinner, he sat at a kingly table, grinning goofily and mimicking the nobles around him as best he could. His new and inexplicable wife adored him, and him her. When you said your goodbyes, he offered you a heavy golden crown off the top of his head. It weighed heavy with traditions and ancient histories. You said it'd be best if he kept it. The wild man shrugged and walked off, spinning the circuit around a finger. Steinar retired from fighting while he still had most of his fingers and toes intact. He went back to working for the nobility. 
Last you heard, he was out west building a great tower for some noblemen. Sadly, you also heard the tower collapsed halfway through its construction, with many workers going down with it. But that's just business for mercenaries. Some make it, some don't. No company lives forever, and fewer yet will see so much as a line of mention in the history books. You plan to comfortably live out the rest of your days, and hope those who survive their time in cell sorting do the same. What an interesting campaign that was. That... I mean, we've had some tough times before, but holy hell. That was absolutely brutal. I'm not going to bother with the scenarios, I don't think. Draw videos I don't need. Okay, so. The next video or two should be preview videos of the upcoming DLC. We obviously haven't seen the DLC yet, so it'll be mostly speculation, and I'm going to theory craft how I think it's going to impact the game. Not sure how long that'll take, so it might be one video uh, containing all of the uh, dev blogs, or I might do one for each. We'll see. Uh, probably no more than a week, we'll take a break, and then we will jump straight back into season 19 it is now, with another company. The Dawnbringers clearly didn't have a good go of it, so potentially we'll give the Knights of Ni a chance. Okay friends, thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking it out with me. This was absolute suffering. But again, beauty of the game, learnt a lot. Even over a thousand hours played, and 18 campaigns in, I'm still not playing as well as I could be, or sh should be. But I think it just comes down to consistency. It, it's not just enough to know what to do in any uh, in any situation. It's about doing the right thing consistently because you make one mistake and you start sliding. Well, that's Battle Brothers. That's why we love it. Thanks for watching, friends. See you next time.